everybody, and welcome to this session of Kaiju Masterclass. We're very happy that you're joining us. My name is Eric Hominick, and I am joined here by fellow Kaiju Masterclass faculty, John DeSantis and, Am and Amanda Whalen for what is sure to be a very interesting and exciting interview with our guest for this session, Mr. Makoto Inoue. Hi. Mr. Inoue is a composer and instrumentalist who has been involved in a number of Kaiju music albums and concerts over the years. In the early 1980s, he produced and performed on the albums Godzilla Legend and Godzilla Legend 2 Voyage to Dream Quest, both featuring original electronic arrangements of Kaiju and tokusatsu music by Akira Ifukube, Masaru Sato, and Yuji Koseki. In 1986, Mr. Inoue co-produced the popular Ostinato album, featuring modern re-recordings of cues from Akira Ifukube's iconic monster and sci-fi scores. In 2017, Inoue and his band Hikashu performed the Godzilla Legend music of Akira Ifukube concert in New York City. And of course, today, Mr. Inoue joins us to talk about his career in the world of kaiju music. Mr. Inoue, thank you very much for joining thank us you. here at Kaiju Master yeah. Class. So, so to get things started, I just wanted to ask you a little bit about how you became interested in music and how you decided to become a musician. はい、え、私まず10歳の頃、え、ゴジラなどの怪獣映画が大好きで月々と公開される怪獣映画はもう欠かさずに見に行きました。その映画館の中で私は伊福部明さんの映画音楽を非常に大きな音で聞いていたは
um, but he still feels personally like he can't read it satisfactorily. Um, recently, he realized that the cause of this was a type of developmental disability. Wow, that's 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 amazing. I, I never would have thought. So with even without a, a lack of formal musical training, Mr. Inoue went on to become a, a musician and uh, collaborated with uh, Yasushi Yamashita, another musician um, for uh, music in a band called Inoyama Land. Uh, this is question number three. So Mr. Inoue, uh, could you talk a little bit about your uh, collaboration with Mr. Yam uh, Yamashita to create this band Inoyama Land where your focus was something called ambient and environmental music. Can you talk a little bit about that? Hi. Uh, I was in the え、この2人のユニットは最初はヒカシュウと名乗っていました。その後、イノヤマランドに um, so he uh, beginning in the summer of uh, 1977, he was in charge of the music for an avant-garde performance that was produced by his friend uh, Koichi Makigami. Um, and at that time, Makigami-san introduced him to Yasushi Yamashita, and they composed and performed the music together. Um, and the collaboration that he did uh, with Yamashita-san was, was very exciting. Um, and he enjoyed it a lot. So after that performance was over, they continued to perform together. Um, and at the beginning, they actually called the unit of the two of them Hikashu. So uh, Hikashu actually came before uh, Inoyama Land. I believe it would have been in the early 1980s, um, Mr. Inoue, that uh, maybe you started thinking of uh, arranging Godzilla music for electronic ensemble. Uh, is that sort of correct? Was the early 1980s about when this idea came to you? Uh, obviously, you've said you were a big Godzilla fan, big Akira of Kube fan. So tell us about when you started to think about doing synthesizer arrangements of, uh, of Godzilla music. Yeah, um, その え、Hi. Uh, so in 1977, um, recordings of Akira Ifukube's old um, film music were released for the first time. Um, and at that time, he was really crazy about electronic music mostly. But as soon as he heard those recordings, he had like a really intense flashback to being a young kid that was really into kaiju movies. Um, and at first, he thought that. You know, it was just powerful nostalgia for, for kaiju movies in that time in his life. But um, he quickly realized that it was not just that. It was also the the power of the enormous life energy contained in Ufukube-san's music itself that was affecting him so strongly. Um, so he increasingly had a desire to study what he saw as the magic of Ifukube-san's music. Um, so... 
after he listened to the recordings a bunch of times, um, he started to mimic the the tone of the instruments in the recording with his synthesizer um, and perform uh, copies of the melodies and the rhythm and was just like recording it a little bit at a time at a time as he went along. Um, and he did note that uh, he did this without any real fundamental knowledge about orchestras or how they worked at the time. So he considers it like a very childish work. Like if a child was copying a picture of a kaiju on paper using crayon, but it was really fun and he had a great time doing it. So uh, in 1983, the first Godzilla legend recording uh, came out and the the record by all um, by all accounts was a was a big success. And um, who were the performers on the first Godzilla Legend? Were they members of Hikashu, for example? Godzilla Densetsu's start was, first of all, I started my personal recording. I didn't start as Hikashu. 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 多重録音オーバーダビングをして、えー、作りましたでその次に、えー、ボーカルトラックにマギアミさんや戸川淳さんなどが参加してくれました、えー、私の友人のミュージシャンは皆等しく福部明さんの音楽を子どもの頃のゴジラの怪獣の記憶と一緒に、えー、等しく共有していたので彼らは次々とレコーディングのスタジオに訪れてはそれぞれの福部、えー、サウンドへの敬愛、愛情をレコーディングしていってくれました。そうやって出来上がりました。はい。Um, so he mentioned that this didn't actually start out as a Hikashu project in particular. It was more of a personal project.、Um, but they all kindly cooperated with it in the end.、Um, so、um, he did the overdubbing of the basic track on the synthesizer in Mellotron. And then he asked Makigami san and Togawa Jun、um, and so forth for vocal tracks.、Um, and he also mentioned、um, many of his musician friends、um, also had good memories of you know, Ifukubi san's music from watching kaiju movies when they were young. So they, they very kindly visited the recording studio one after another and recorded their. Their respect and their love for Ifukube's sound.、Mm. Excellent. Really excellent. So, Mr. Inoue, I suspect that to create these recordings, you would have had to、uh, collaborate not just with the members of Hikashu, but also to some extent with the composers of kaiju music, namely Akira Ifukube, Masaru Sato, and even Yuji Koseki. Can you talk a little bit about that?、Um, how did you approach them? And for these composers, what w a s their initial reactions to,、uh, to your proposals? Did you speak to all of them or just one of them? Could you tell us a little bit about that? Godzilla d e n s e s という record の企画は、あのまあ、あのプロデューサーの岩瀬正夫さんという方が、伊福部さんやあの他の佐藤勝さん、小関裕二さんに連絡をしてくださったと思います。岩瀬正夫さんという方は、ゴジラシリーズを制作した東宝という映画会社の音楽プロデューサーです。ゴジラ伝説のファーストアルバムを制作するときは、私はまだ伊福部さんと交流がありませんでした。伊福部さんから楽譜を見せてもらったり、アレンジの相談をするということはもちろんありませんでした。とにかく夢中で作りましたが、完成したレコードを伊福部さんがどのように評価するのかとても心配でした。佐藤勝さんと小関裕二さんに連絡したのもやはり岩瀬さんだと思います。彼らとももちろん交流はなかったので、す、え、べ、ー、て自分の耳で聞いた音だけを頼りにアレンジ用の楽譜を作りました。えー、今となってはこの佐藤勝さん、小関裕二さんが私のアルバムをどのように評価してくださったのか、えー私は知らなかったのですが、お二人が元気な時にお会いして、非常に厳しい批判批評をいただきたかった。今は残念に思います。はい。Um, so he did not really have any personal interaction with these people.、Um, the producer,、uh, Masao Iwase, was the one who contacted Ifukuri san about the project.、Um, Iwase san was a music producer at Toho. 
uh, who, as I'm sure you know, is the, the company that produced the Godzilla series. Um, and then before he made the first album, he he hadn't yet had any interaction with ifukube san personally. Okay. Um, so unfortunately, he was not able to see the musical scores or discuss the musical arrangements with ifukube san at that point. Um, anyway, he got very absorbed in making the music. Um, and he was he was very worried, actually, about what ifukube san would think about the completed recordings. Um, and then regarding Masaru Sato and Yuji Koseki, it was actually Iwase-san who contacted them, he believes. Um, so he didn't really have any personal interaction with them. Um, and that musical score, he just arranged by ear. Okay. Um, and then um, he he doesn't know what uh, Masaru Sato and Yuji Koseki thought of his album. Um, and he made a point of saying that he regrets he wasn't able to meet them when they were healthy because he really would have loved to receive harsh criticism from them. <laughs> well, I just, I, I want a, a, a little bonus question. So the, the question is, at the time, he did not have access to the, the manuscript scores. He did everything by ear? Uh, um, so actually, the third album in the Godzilla Legend series was the first time that he was able to see the musical scores from um, Fukubisan, um, but he did have some trouble reading them, actually. Yeah, well, 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 not, well, not much trouble, because the, the end results of everything was just absolutely fantastic that's that's very surprising very surprising to learn that <laughs> indeed so with without for this first album with without even seeing any of of the printed scores and even really interacting with any of the composers doing this by ear as a a passion product uh project sorry um, I wonder, during the recording process, did uh, did Mr. Inoue have any favorite tracks that he had while he was working on them, or perhaps uh, you know final product? Favorite tracks from that album? Uh, favorite segments? あの、ま、気に入ってる曲もも ま、どの曲もみんな最初録音したセーナルイズミはこれは戸川淳さんのボーカルでした。で、上野浩二さんが新世サイザーハープを演奏しました。この ゴジラ so all of the songs on the albums um, are are important to him, and they're songs that he was from, he's been familiar with since he was a child. Um, and there are songs that he likes, songs that he thinks kind of added a new image to what the synthesizer can do. Um, but there's also some arrangements that he feels like he was not able to express well enough mm. how good the original song was, and he regrets that a bit. Um, but the songs that left the deepest impression on him were um, Sacred Fountain, Seinaru Izumi, um, from album one, and the theme from Mechagodzilla in album five. 
So for Sacred Fountain or Seina Izumi, um, Jun Togawa did the vocals um, and Koji Ueno played the synthesizer harp. Um, and he believes that those two people uh, really deeply understood Ifukube-san's music um, and were able to create a very generous, loving expression of that in their recording. Um, and he feels that he was able to start Godzilla Legend thanks to the kind support of those two people. Mm. Wonderful. Um, and then moving on to um, theme from Mechagodzilla. Um, obviously, as I'm sure you know, that was the main theme from the 1993 Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla. Um, and when Ifukube-san was recording the music for that film, um, Inoue-san was actually right by him the whole time. Um, oh. He was able to watch that whole process of creating the music, um, performing it, and then using it to exert power throughout the film. Um, and he says that he will uh, never forget the joy of being able to record that song uh, with wonderful musicians in New York. Okay, what were the unique challenges of adapting uh, these Godzilla scores for electronic, electronic ensemble, especially if you didn't have access to the printed scores? Uh, すぐに表現の限界が見えてきました。アンサンブル。これは非常に魔法のようでした。特に驚いたのは、イフクベアキラさんが映画音楽のレコーディングにエレクトロニックオルガンあの、山派のエレクトーンというエレクトロニックオルガンを使ったことです。エレクトロニック
when it's that's skillfully blended with the acoustic instruments of an orchestra, uh, it can produce a surprisingly powerful and original tone. Um, and that, uh, the, the, that technique of amplifying and transforming the electronic organ with the complex sound waves of acoustic instruments um, has finally kind of caught on with the latest synthesizers. Um, but actually, Ifa san was implementing this principle in his film music recordings more than half a century ago, and he finds that very surprising. So um, does Mr. Inouye have a recollection as to how his albums were received when they were released in Japan, at, the fir at least the first few in the 1980s? Like Because uh, that presentation was, kind of, was obviously very new, uh, kind of hearing those, fil or those tracks apart from the films, but being in synthesizer so how were the albums received はい。あの、正直今でもこのアルバム自体がどのようにあの評価されているのか私はよくわからないところがあります。え、アレンジやパフォーマンスへの評価というのはあんまり聞こえてこないんですが、え、とにかくこのゴジラ伝説というアルバ
just, you know, speaking, you know, generally about the music and Mr. Inouye's attraction to it, um, what is, this is number 12, uh, Mr. Inouye, what do you admire about If Kube and Sato and Koseki's music, you know, kaiju music in general? What are some aspects of their music that you think makes it so special? And what is it about their individual styles that make their music so well suited for kaiju films, in your opinion? Hi, として これらすべての特徴的な手法は映画音楽の作曲にも惜しみなく使われました。しかも映画音楽ではさらに音響心理学や映画独自のモンタージュ理論ですとか、そういうふうなものも取り入れて映画の脚本や演出、シーンごとの
music from the uh, Japanese indigenous people, the Ainu, um, and his excellent sense of popular songs and rhythm arrangements with the powerful sounds of indigenous music uh, contributed greatly to the world of the work Mothra. Excellent. And if I could, I, I want to sneak in another question. I was, I was very fascinated about the Ifkube's connection to montage theory in, in films, because I do know that during his seminars at the Tokyo College of Music, Ifkube talked a lot about various types of film techniques, not just scoring. So uh, I know it's kind of an esoteric subject, but could Mr. Inoue speak a little bit more about what he knows about Yves Kube's um, connection and technique to scoring as it relates to montage theory. Hi. あの、元々伊福部さんは作曲家として um, so he explained that Ifukube san um, was actually in the past kind of a, a science, a scientist, a science minded person. So he had an interest in things like chemistry and physics. Um, so he kind of approached movies from the perspective of a scientist as well um, and thought about you know, the, the movie system and how can I grab onto and control people's emotions um, in a very sort of cool kind of like calculated kind of way because, mm. you know, from a scientist's perspective. Mm. Um, so that was something that he was very deeply interested in. He, he, he made some movies himself, I guess. Um, and then he taught about these kinds of theories um, in, in classes and seminars to try to kind of pass that knowledge along. Fascinating, absolutely fascinating. And with Mr. Inoue describing all of the great qualities of Koseki's music and Ifukube's music and Sato's music for kaiju films, this is number 13. Mr. Inoue, do you have a favorite Godzilla score? <laughs> and what is it? <laughs> I know. 好きなゴジラミュージックの音楽は本当にたくさんあります。たくさんたくさんありすぎて、5枚もアルバムを作ってしまいました。そうですね。Um, <笑> so he said that he he likes a lot of Godzilla music and uh, actually he likes so much of it uh, that there is too much of it that he likes and he made five albums worth of it. <笑> I can understand that, John. So, uh, so Mr. Inoue, obviously uh, you sort of had a continuing relationship with Mr. Ifukube over the years. And can you sort of talk about how your personal relationship with him uh, kind of developed in uh, obviously with collaboration and friendship and uh, sort of what led to you being a producer on the famous Ostinato album in 1986? Hi. その日私は東京のレコーディングスタジオで皮下集のアルバムように私が作曲した曲の編集作業をしていました。え、その曲は私があの、伊福部明さんの音楽への私は伊福部さんの音楽があまりに好きなあまり、ついに幻聴が聞こえてきたのかな、そう思いましたが、実はすぐ隣のスタジオで伊福部さんご自身も自分のオーケストラ作品を編集していきました。
、そこでプロデューサーが私たちを伊福部さんに紹介してくださったところ、伊福部さんはすでに私たち皮下衆のことを知っていて大変に驚きました。それからは伊福部さんの自宅に通うようになりました。1983年には伊福部さんが SF ファンタジーを構成するための楽譜探しのお手伝いもしました。SF 故郷ファンタジーが完成した後も伊福部さんの家に通い続け、すべての映画音楽の楽譜の発掘作業をずっと続けてきました。その頃、私は東方の映像制作部門からビデオ作品の音楽制作を依頼されました。その作品は、つぶらえいじ監督。つぶらえいじ監督が怪獣映画を編集作業をしたときに、切り落としてしまった未発表のフィルムを集めて、特撮映画のメイキング、メイキング作品としてまとめられました。監督は川北浩一さんでした。そこで私は、この、えー、伊福部明さんの自宅から発掘した大量の特撮映画音楽の楽譜を新しくオーケストラで演奏して、えー、ビデオの音楽にすることを提案しました。そしてそのビデオのサウンドトラックとして完成したのがオスティナートです。Um, so, Inoue san first met Ifukube san in 1981.、Um, that day, he was working on editing a song that he composed for a Hikashu album at a recording studio in Tokyo.、Um, and that particular song was an homage to Ifukube san's work, something that he put a lot of thought into.、Um, and while working on it, he kept faintly hearing Ifukube music in the background. And he wondered, kind of, for a moment there, if he just liked Ifukube san's music so much that he was like hallucinating it. <laughs> He's like, is it really, is it really there?、Uh, but actually,、uh, Ifukube san was editing his own orchestral work in the studio、wow. next door to him.、Um, so the producer was kind enough to introduce him、um, to Ifukube san and. They were terribly surprised to learn that he actually had heard of their group, Hikashu, and he knew about them.、Um, so after that meeting, he,、uh, he started going to Ifukube san's home、uh, to visit. And in 1983,、um, Ifukube san actually helped him find the scores that he needed to compose、um, SF、mm. Symphony Fantasy.、Mm. Um, And even after SF Symphony Fantasy was completed,、um, he continued to come to Ifukube san's home and kind of work on excavating all of these film scores.、Um, and around that time, he,、uh, he was asked by Toho's video production department to make、uh, the music for a video.、Yeah. Um, and this was, I'm sure you may already know this, this is a project that used.、Um, Uh, combined、uh, unreleased film that was cut by、uh, director Eiji Tsuburaya while editing、uh, kaiju movies.、Um, and that was compiled into a making of Tokusatsu film's work.、Um, and it was directed by、uh, Koichi Kawakita.、Um, and therefore,、um, he proposed that for this video project,、uh, they perform a score using、uh, many of the Tokusatsu film music scores that he had dug up at Ifukube san's house. Uh, with an orchestra.、Um, and so the soundtrack to that video was, was called Los Dinados. So, just、uh, as a quick aside, so the actual genesis of the entire Ostinato、uh, album,、uh, that was Inoue san's idea? Yes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. I、uh, that's incredible.、Uh, so, Inoue san,、uh, in 2017, The Godzilla Legend recordings were re released and I guess remastered.、Um, can you tell us kind of how that came about? Like, did it just feel sort of right to kind of give those a new,、uh, I guess, lease on life with modern sound equipment and mastering techniques? And what was the reaction to the re release in Japan? First, Godzilla Densets project was the first time I was in the first time. In 2011, I was in the first time I was in the first time I was in the first time I was in the これこで福島の原子力発電所がメルトダウンを起こしたことです。1954年に制作された第1作目のゴジラ。これが核エネルギーのダークサイドが引き起こす恐怖のメタファーだったということは皆さんもご存知だと思います。しかし私たちは次第にその恐怖を忘れ、日本中に
たくさんの原子力発電所を作ってしまいました。その結果が福島の大惨事です。私たちはもう一度1954年のゴジラが訴えた核エネルギーのダークサイドについて考えることが必要だと思いました。すぐに牧山光一さんが行動を起こしました。2011年の11月12月には皮下州とその友人のミュージシャンでゴジラ伝説のライブパフォーマンスを復活させました。このユニットは翌年2012年には大規模な野外フェスにも出演し、多くの観客が伊福部さんや古関さんの怪獣映画音楽を楽しんでくれました。そのお客さんの中にはゴジラやそしてモスラがどうして誕生してきたのか、その映画が訴えた深いテーマに気づいてくれた人もいたと思います。Um, so, the reason for restarting the Godzilla Legend project was actually the meltdown of the Fukushima nuclear plant、um, in the Great Eastern、mm-hmm. Japan earthquake on March 11, 2011.、Mm-hmm. Um, and as I think you all know,、um, the first Godzilla film in 1954 was、uh, a metaphor for the horror caused by the dark side、um, of nuclear energy. Uh, however, we gradually forgot that fear over time and built many nuclear power plants all over Japan.、Um, and、uh, the Fukushima catastrophe was an unfortunate result of that.、Um, so we thought that it was once again necessary to think about the dark side of nuclear energy,、uh, which had been criticized in the 1954 Godzilla film. So、um, Koichi Makigami took action on this right away. and... In December of 2011,、um, Hikashu and、uh, our musician friends began a revival of the live performances of Godzilla Legend.、Um, this unit also appeared at a large scale outdoor festival in 2012,、um, and a large audience was able to enjoy the kaiju movie music of Ifukube san and Kosaki san.、Um, and I believe that there、uh, were some members of the audience that were aware of. The reasons that Godzilla and Mothra were born and the, the deep themes in those kaiju films.、Mm. So, it,、uh, just an aside so, so, in a sense, the, the re release of this, of this music was in many ways a sort of political statement, it sounds like. Well, of course, it was a little bit of a problem, but the album was a little bit of a problem. It was a little bit of a problem. It was a little bit of a problem. あのゴジラ映画というのは非常に深いメッセージを持っていますがそれ以上にとてもあのいい意味でのエンターテインメントみんなが楽しめる映画このこともとても大切なことだと思いますみんなが思いっきり映画の世界に浸って非常にこうエキサイトして楽しんで,でその後で何かしら大切なことというのがどっかに残ればそれでそれは素晴らしいことだと思いますゴジラ伝説のアルバムもそんなふうにまず楽しんで聴いていただけるようにそのことをとても大切にしました。うん、そう、he backed away from saying that it was political necessarily, but、um, you know when he was creating the album and performing it, you know the first thing that was on his mind is just wanting people to enjoy it,、um, and that when you、uh, watch a kaiju movie,、um, you know it's it's ultimately entertainment. You have a good time watching it, and then after it's over. Ideally, it'll leave kind of a little kernel of something in your mind, like, oh, maybe this is an important message.、Hmm. Um, so there's kind of like two aspects that are important there.、Um, but, you know, one of them is, is just, to,、uh, just to enjoy the entertainment. So, not to read too much into it. Well, just sort of kind of jumping off of the entertainment aspect of it,、uh, obviously in、uh, 2017, Uh, Hikashu came to New York City.、Uh, it was a v- wonderful concert.、Uh, I, was, I had the good fortune of attending and a、uh, fantastic performance. And sort of performing Godzilla Legend, the, the music of Akira Ifukube, to a New York audience, how did the, that concert at Japan Society come about? And how did he feel to perform this live music for an American audience?、Yeah. ニューヨークで演奏したときは、ジャパンソサイティというところのホールで演奏しました。あのジャパンソサイティのスタッフにゴジラ伝説のライブパフォーマンスを紹介してくれたのもマギアミさんです。この頃には2011年からずっと演奏してきた新しいスタイルのアレンジが完成してきたので
それをニューヨークでニューヨークのレコーディングスタジオでレコーディングしようということも考えましたニューヨークでライブをすることで一つ心配なことがありました海外でゴジラ映画が公開された時に伊福部明さんが作曲した音楽の多くが実は別の作曲家の書いたストックスコアに差し替えられてしまったそういうことを日本のファンは知っていますだから私たちの演奏する曲は実は海外の人にあまり知られていないのではないかそういう心配がありましたしかし私たちは伊福部さんの音楽そのものが持っているパワー伊福部さんの音楽そのものの魅力を信じて演奏しその思いはお客さんにも受け入れられていただいたのではないかと思います。はい。Um, so they,、uh, this live performance was done at the Japan Society Hall in New York,、um, as you know, John.、Um, and it was Makagami san who、uh, introduced that live performance unit for Godzilla Legends to the staff of the Japan Society.、Um, so that was one of the reasons that it came about. And then also at that time, Um, the new jazz rock style arrangements that、um, he's been performing since 2011 were completed.、Um, so he was interested in recording those at a studio in New York as well. So that was another reason.、Um, and he mentioned that he was worried a bit about playing live in New York、um, because、uh, fans in Japan are aware that when Godzilla movies were released outside of Japan, Um, in some cases, a lot of the music composed by、um, Ifukube san was replaced by stock scores written by other composers.、Yeah. Um, so he、yeah. was concerned that the songs that they played might not be well known to a foreign audience. Um, however, um, they did strongly believe in the appeal of Ifukube san's music、um, as a standalone thing as itself. Regardless of whether they had heard it in the film.、Um, and so they, they did their best and performed it, and they think that the audience was receptive to that. They, they most certainly were. Tascani <laughs> sold <laughs> So, Mr. Inoue, you have such a long career as, as an instrumentalist,、uh, performing both on recordings and in live venues, just as you were mentioning here about the performance in New York. What do you think is for you the best thing about performing live and connecting with an audience? これはあの伊福部さんの音楽についてなんですが、えー、伊福部さんの音楽の原点の,その一つにアイヌと呼ばれる日本の先住民族の人たちの音楽がありますその,あの非常にこう素朴でエネルギーに満ちた民族音楽彼らは楽譜も文字も使わずにライブ演奏だけで直接人から人へ音楽を伝承していきました。それが大切なこと、とても大切なことだということを私は伊福部さんから教わりました。私自身も音楽をライブで演奏するときはいつもそのことを心がけるようにしています。はい。Um, so, uh, speaking about y f u k u b e s a n s music in particular,、um, he mentioned that it was folk music That was part of the origin of, of Ifukube san's music. It was folk music filled with the, the energy of the, the indigenous people of Japan, the Ainu.、Um, and the Ainu have actually passed down music directly from person to person through live performances、um, without using any sheet music or notes.、Um, and Ifukube san taught him that this was something that was very important, just this sort of practice of passing along live music. Um, and that every time he performs live, this is something that he remembers.、Oh, that's, that's really, really great. And I, I want to circle back. It's a bonus question, but I think it's important. He mentioned that he was、uh, present during the recording sessions for Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla in 1993. I just wanted to get his remarks on what that was like to, to witness that. That's one of the best. Godzilla scores, I think. And just to, to be there to, to watch the process, to watch that music be recorded so close to the composer, what, what was that experience like? Very exciting. And so, I was happy. 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 にあのゴジラ VS モスラという
映画もあの音楽を作曲しているんですが、そのゴジラ VS モスラの時に、実はあの途中まで作曲して使われなかったマーチというのがありました。次のゴジラ VS メカゴジラの時に、改めて新しいマーチを作るというふうな必要が出てきた時に、伊福部さんが私にあの聞いてくれましたあの。どんなふうな形のものがいいだろうか。そこで私はその一つ前のゴジラ VS モスラにあの使われることのなかったマーチを完成させて使ってみるというのはいかがでしょうかそういうふうに提案しましたそして出来上がったものが g f o r c e の非常に速いマーチですね g f o r c e マーチと呼ばれているアレグロですこれはとてもエキサイティングな一連の出来事でしたはいありがとうございます、um, so it was, it was really really fun it was really exciting Um, he's like various emotions all swirling together. Even now, looking back on it, it was a very emotional time.、Um, and also, he, he provided an anecdote、uh, mentioning that before、um, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla,、um, Fukube san obviously did the music for、um, Mothra, for、uh, Godzilla vs. Mothra.、Um, and for that film, they, they had been making a march,、um, but it didn't end up being used.、Um, so, And when it came around to do、uh, Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla,、um, it was decided that they needed to do a new march to put in the film.、Um, and Ifukube san、um, asked Inoue san what he thought,、um, what he thought about the situation、um, and kindly listened to his opinion about it.、Um, and Inoue san was the one to suggest well, what if we go back and we take that unused march from Godzilla versus Mothra and we finish it? And how would that be?、Um, so they ended up doing that, and that is the、um, fast paced G Force Allegro March. So that was his idea. Oh, that's actually interesting.、Uh, didn't know that that was sort of, that had a genesis going back to、uh, the year before, actually. And another、uh, question about just. He had such an incredible opportunity to observe this recording, these recording sessions, and to actually have some input into them. Can Mr. Inoue speak briefly just about what he observed Ifukube's procedures or techniques were during the recording sessions? Are there any interesting things that stand out to Mr. Inoue about how Mr. Ifukube would rehearse with his orchestra, for example? はいあのまあ、録音に入る前作曲準備をする時なんですが非常にこう丁寧に脚本を読み込まれる方ですシーンのつながりですとかどんな映像がその全体を支配するかそういうふうなこともいろいろと推測してここの音の,あの量をどれくらいの量を大きくするのか非常に小さいものにするのかでそれはどれくらい続くのかもうシナリオの段階からそういうふうなことを細かくスケッチしていき,いっていきましたそうして少しずつ準備をしながらあの楽譜を書いていくんですけれどもそうやってあの最後の方は幾番も徹夜しての大変な作業になったというのもあの見てきましたでいざそれがレコーディングされるんですけれども英語音楽のレコーディングの現場では伊福部さんは必ず大きなスクリーンに映像を投射してそれをオーケストラの演奏者にまず見てもらうそしてこんなとんでもない怪獣が出てくるシーンの音楽ですからそういう心構えで演奏してくださいそういうふうなことを常に演奏者に伝えていましただから伊福部さんのサンドトラックは普通のオーケストラとはちょっと違う独特の響きがあるんだと思いますそうやって苦労して作った音楽なんですが映画を編集している段階でせっかく音楽をつけたはずの,あのシーンが入れ替わってしまう別の映像と入れ替わってしまうというふうなこともありましたそういう時にはあの大変苦労して作ったあのスコアであるにもかかわらず、ひくべさんはあの映画全体のプロセスを考えて惜しみなくそういうものはカットする。何よりも常に映画にとってどんなことが一番いいことかというのを最優先に考えている方でした。その姿勢は最後までつなら貫かれていました。素晴らしいことだと思いました。はい。Um... So he says that Ifukube san was always the type of person to read the script book very, very carefully before、um, recording anything. 
Um, and he would think about what kind of volume was appropriate for a scene. Should it be quiet? Should it be very loud? How long should the music go on? Um, and then he would always um, show the part of the film on a big screen um, to the performers as well um, so that they could get in the right frame of mind because you know, if you have a scene where a giant monster is dramatically appearing and smashing things or doing whatever giant monsters do, um, you know, you want to have the right emotional frame of mind for that. Um, and also when uh, editing the film, sometimes there were cases where things were cut or moved around. Um, and Ifukube-san was always very diligent about um, thinking about pri prioritizing what was best for the film as a whole and figuring out where to cut, make changes and that kind of thing. Um, and he really thought that it was incredible to watch him work. Um, he was very dedicated. Excellent. So, uh, Mr. Inouye, uh, and moving on to question 19. So, uh, Mr. Kootani, uh composed the music for uh, Godzilla, Mothra, King Ghidorah, Giant Monsters, All Out Attack, and it was a score that was very heavy with synthesizers. Um, did Mr. Inouye see that film? And if so, uh, what was his impressions of that score? Because it was a very different type of Godzilla score than we were used to at the time. あの、大谷さんの音楽はカネコ監督の演出に大きく貢献していると思います。シンセサイザーの使用ということではあの、特に印象に残っているのがあの、ゴジラが日中に港町に上陸し、市内を破壊しながら歩いていく。その um, so he says that the the Godzilla that Godzilla film, which is directed by Shusuke Kaneko, is a favorite of his. He really likes it, um, and he thought that Otani-san's music greatly contributed to um, Kaneko's uh, direction and production, um, and in particular um, regarding. Um, music with the synthesizers there's music in a scene where godzilla lands in like a port town during the day and walks through destroying the city um and the use of synthesizers in that left a really strong impression on him um it's kind of like very noisy synthesizer um music so that was something that left a, an impression um and then for otani's other work um, he really likes the music in the Gamera trilogy that started in 1995, and that's another favorite of his. Did Inoue-san ever have a desire to compose film music early on or throughout his career, or does he really enjoy recording albums and playing live more? Mm -hmm. でも、今振り返るとあまり映画に貢献できたとは思いません。その後、伊福部さんの演奏音楽を深く研究し、映画音楽に特有の作曲上のご苦労、それから監督たちとの対人関係の苦労、そういうふうなことをいろいろ知っ
interpersonal difficulties with directors. Um, he came to the conclusion that that was just not not the job for him. Um, and also another point is that um, in favor of album production and live performances, um, those are collaborations with many musicians who like Godzilla and Ifa Kube-san's music as much as he does. So really that environment's a lot of fun and you can share a very fulfilling time together. So that's the that's what he prefers. I wonder, uh, and Mr. Inoue has already mentioned how Yves Kube's ideas and philosophies have influenced him as a musician and as a performer. For example, you know, the part about the spontaneous energy of performing live, like an Ainu performance. I wonder, as a musician, what is the most important lesson or philosophy that Mr. Inoue keeps close to him or keeps keeps in mind when he's writing or performing new music. たくさんありますが、難しく考えることではなく、もちろん学問としての音楽も重要なんでしょうけれども、小さな子供が自然と感情表現の中でごく自然に湧き上がってくる音楽。そういうふうなものもとても大切なんだ。そういうものの楽しさというのを忘れない
、これはあの見終わった後に非常にはっきりとしたあの記憶に残るフレーズというのがよくあったんですが、ハリウッドで制作されたゴジラ映画にはそれほど強く感じることはありません。しかしそれは映画と音楽、ね、映画が音楽に何を求めるか、音楽が映画に何を貢献するかということの違いが日本とアメリカで異なるというふうなことから生まれることで、決して音楽そのものの優劣とは関係がありません。もちろん私はレジェンダリーピクチャーズのゴジラ音楽はどれも大好きです。And so, this is something that he heard from Yukube san、um, that from like, you know, more than half a century ago, the, the characteristics of film music were different from country to country throughout the world.、Mm-hmm. Um, and Yukube san believed that that was because different ethnic groups maybe like, received, appreciated music a little bit differently、um, due to cultural differences.、Um, So he was saying, you know, Russia's got sort of the distinctive Russian style, other European countries have their own styles.、Um, and then there's the American Hollywood style with their sort of、um, characteristic combination of、um, film, visuals, and music.、Um, and it's kind of interesting to, to look into this.、Um, and Ifukube san was the type of person to do a lot of research into things like this.、Um, And he, he does think that the, the music of the Legendary Pictures Godzilla series、um, contributes well to the film with excellent Hollywood style techniques.、Um, but on the other hand,、um, in Japanese kaiju films, there were frequently、um, specific musical phrases that he felt were vividly memorable even after he finished watching the films, but he didn't feel that strongly. With the Hollywood Godzilla films.、Um, however, he, he does think that that's because、um, what's, what's desirable or demanded for the music in a film is a little bit different when comparing Japan and the US.、Um, and that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the superiority or inferiority of the music itself.、Um, and he did make a point of saying he does, he does really like. The, the Godzilla movie,、uh, music from the legendary pictures movies. Well, if, if I may, just as a quick bonus relating to this, does he have sort of any feelings about the music in the more recent Japanese productions like Shin Godzilla,、uh, the anime trilogy, or even the more recent Godzilla Singular Point? Because Godzilla is very popular again, and obviously we're seeing the productions on both sides of the world. So, does he have an opinion on, on those recent works at all? はい、あのそれぞれの,あのシン・ゴジラにはシン・ゴジラなりの作曲家の方の,あの手法というものがありますしまたテレビで公開されたシングラーポイントですかあの,のアニメーションのためのゴジラの音楽というふうなものもあのアニメーションしかもテレビでの連続というふうなそういうふうなものの手法にのっとってあの非常に誠実に書かれている音楽だと思います。両方に共通するものとして、イフクベさんのオリジナルのゴジラの音楽がその中に使われたということがあります。これはあの日本のファンの中でもいろいろな意見がありましたが、私はとても肯定的に捉えています。あのご存知のようにゴジラの鳴き声、これそのものも実はイフクベアキラさんが想像したものだという。それと同じようにもはやイフクベさんの音楽、イフクベさんがゴジラのために書いたいくつかのテーマ曲というのは、もうそのゴジラの鳴き声と同じようなポイントにあるんではないか。それほどゴジラと一体化しているものが、あの、他の作曲家の作品の中でも、あの、ゴジラそのものの何か形として使われていくというのは、僕はとても面白い子だと思いますし、あの、いろんな意味での冒険を作曲家の人たちが楽しんでいるのかなというふうに、好意的に捉えています。はい。I'm so speaking about,、um... Um, the film Shin Godzilla and then also the, the anime works. He thinks that both of them use music in a way that's appropriate for that medium.、Um, you know, for a TV show, you have to have something that will fit with that.、Um, and so there's lots of different opinions among fans in Japan, but he thinks that、um, it was really interesting that they used like actual、um, Kube music in those. Like stop、um, tracks, yeah. Um, and then, like, also Godzilla's cry is the same. 
Um, and he thinks that that kind of thing sort of allows this unified perception of Godzilla to continue regardless of the differences of the works themselves. Um, and that he thinks it's really cool that we get to see um, all of these different adventures um, with Godzilla in these different mediums and that, you know, that's, that's fun. Okay, well, one final question for Mr. Inoue. Uh, we've had such a great time talking with you today and we are just so, so honored and happy to speak to you about your career and your experiences, your very close experiences with Kaiju music. Uh, Mr. Inoue, our final question for you today is, do you have any musical projects that you're working on right now that you would like to talk a little bit about and maybe let us know about? Hi. ありがとうございました。まず私と東州、東州のメンバーとは今も1年に1回ぐらいのペースでゴジラ伝説のライブパフォーマンスを続けています。それ以外の時間、私は山下さんと2人でユナヤマランドとしてのライブも、そしてア
um, an album of ambient music designed by Inoyama Land for um, uh, large public facilities and theme parks, museums, pavilions, that kind of thing throughout Japan. Um, also, a Swiss label um, has re-released the first album that Inoyama Land uh, recorded 40 years ago, um, and that's become kind of a hot topic throughout Europe. Um, and and again, yeah, he's, he's got that for you guys. Um, and they are actually planning to release a new album in Japan in December of this year. Let's see, and then um, also uh, last month, the, the label that released Godzilla Legend um, released a CD titled The Greatest Japanese Film Scores, uh, Symphonic Film Spectacular 12, which he is kindly holding up for us. Um, and this contains the main themes from Godzilla, uh, Rodan, King Kong versus Godzilla, Monster Zero, Destroy All Monsters, etc., cetera, uh, newly recorded by an orchestra. Um, and the, uh, the King Kong versus Godzilla's theme also uses a mixed chorus. Uh, and he uh, says, please give it a listen. Uh, he would appreciate your support. Will do. Um, yes. And uh, one final thing that he is doing. Uh, he is trying to find ways to pass on the enormous legacy that he feels Ifukube san has entrusted to him uh, along to the next generation. Um, so there's going to be a library um, archiving all of his existing pure music and film music scores, um, CDs, DVDs, etc. that will be opening in Tokyo next year. Um, and he hopes wow. that um, when the coronavirus pandemic um, ends uh, someday, uh, it's his dream that uh, Ifukube fans from all around the world will visit um, and be able to experience Ifukube-san's legacy. For sure, that's a destination. Um, <laughs> just thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. This was a very enjoyable interview. Uh, thank you so much for the time and just sort of thinking back and reminiscing about your career and the impact of Mr. Ifukube's music, as well as Mr. Sato and Mr. Koseki as well. Thank you very much. Uh, he says it was very nice talking to you, so check out his Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Noe.